Welcome back to the channel guys. So in today's video, we'll be creating a wallpaper app from scratch. So let's see how it's going to look. Here I've got the app running on my iPhone 10 simulator. The moment you open the app, it randomly downloads 30 new wallpapers from the Unsplash API. You can easily scroll through all the images. Clicking on an image will scale the image down, bring up these action buttons. Clicking on the save button will save the image to your photos. Clicking the share button, you can copy the link and share it with anyone you like. Clicking the refresh button refreshes the 30 photos. As we build this out, we'll be learning about the file system API in Expo, the share API, the camera roll API, and we'll also be touching on some animations to make this look nice. So as always, this should be fun to build. So let's begin. The first thing we need to do is head over to unsplash.com forward slash developers. Make sure you've created an account, then head over to your apps. Here, you'll have a button like new application. Click on it and go ahead and create your new app. Once your app is created, you'll get your application displaying here. Click on that. Come down here and you'll get these access keys. Go ahead and copy these access keys out because we'll be needing them when we start building the app. So here in front of me, I've got an empty React Native project that I've created with Expo and I've opened it up in Visual Studio Code and I'm running it on my iPhone 10 simulator. We'll start by installing the only dependency that we require which is called Axios. This will help us with our HTTP requests. So open up your terminal and type yarn add Axios. Once you have the dependency installed, head over to your app.js and get rid of this view. Create another view here and let's style that by giving it a flex of one and a background color of black. The next thing that we'll set up is our loading indicator. So here on top, let's import an activity indicator from React Native. So let's open up the view and pass in our activity indicator. Let's set the size to large and the color to gray. Let's align it to the center by saying align item center and justify content center. There we have it working. So while we fetch our photos from the remote API, we want this black screen with this loading indicator to show. Once the images have been fetched, we want to remove this and show the images. So that can be done using state. So let's go ahead and set up our state inside our constructor. So we'll say constructor, always call super inside it. And here we'll say this dot state. And the first thing we'll set up is, is loading. Set that to true by default. Here, we'll only show this activity indicator if the loading indicator is true. Otherwise, we'll show the images. So here, after the return statement, let's pass in our ternary operator by saying this dot state dot is loading. If that is true, then we want to return this activity indicator Otherwise, we want to return another view. Let's also give that view a flex of one and a background color of black for now. So for now, let's just set this loading indicator to false and we see that we get that black screen. So every time the app opens up, we want to hit the Unsplash API and fetch new images. The best place to do that would be in our componented mount. So come here and let's create that. Inside that, we'll call a method called load wallpapers and let's go ahead and bind this method in our constructor. So we'll say this dot load wallpapers is equal to this dot load wallpapers dot bind this. And then let's go ahead and create the function. So we'll say load wallpapers. And inside this, we'll be using Axios to fetch the photographs. So on top here, let's import Axios. So we'll say import Axios from Axios. Come back down here. We'll be making a get request. So we'll say Axios dot get. This will be our URL which we'll just leave empty for now. We'll get a promise in return. Let's resolve that by saying dot then. Inside that we'll say function, get the response. Here we'll be logging out the response for now. Further to catch any error, we'll say dot catch. Inside this we'll say function error. Console dot log the error if there's any. And finally, we'll call dot finally, which will indicate that the request is completed. So we'll say function, and inside this, we'll just pass console.log request completed. So the Unsplash API has several endpoints that you can request photographs from, but we need only one here. So I'm just gonna paste that in and talk you through it. So the API endpoint that we're looking for is api.unsplash.com forward slash photos forward slash random. Then we want to just get the first 30 photographs, which in fact is the maximum number of photographs you can fetch with a free account. And after that, you can pass in your client ID 
which is the secret key I had shown you in the first part of the video. So let's save this out. So you might get this error which says there was a problem sending log messages to your development environment. That's because the log is too huge for export to be sending it. So let's just log out response.data instead. Now we see that the error goes away. Let's open up our debugger. And here you can see our request was completed and we've got our images in return. All we need to do is loop over these images and display them out on our screen. So once we get the data, we just want to update our state with that data. So here in our state, let's create a new property called images and set it to an empty array. Here we'll say this dot set state, set the images to the response dot data. Also, let's return this is loading to true by default. And once the data is returned, we want to set is loading to false. So what we're expecting is once the images are downloaded, this loading indicator should go away because is loading should be set to false. If we come here to our console, we notice that it says that this dot set state is not a function because we don't have access to this inside this callback. We need to make sure that after the curly brace of the callback, we pass in dot bind and pass in this inside it. Now, if we save it, we see we get the loading indicator, which goes away once the images are downloaded. And we can confirm that by going into our console, which shows request completed. Now to display the images in our app, we'll be using Flatlist from React Native. So let's go ahead and import that here. Come back down to our render method. And here in the view that we pass once the loading is complete, let's open up that view. And inside this, let's create a flat list. Firstly, we want the flat list to be scrolling horizontally. So we pass in the prop horizontal. Next, we want paging to be enabled so that we can swipe each image separately. Next, let's pass in the data, which will be equal to this.state.images. Then we pass in render item which basically helps us display each item in the flat list. We'll deconstruct out each item and then we'll pass it to a method called render item. Let's also wrap this into rounded brackets. And here let's go ahead and create render item. As always, we'll go ahead and bind this method first. So here we'll say this dot render item is equal to this dot render item dot bind this. The render item takes one parameter. We'll just call it image. Let's return a view. We'll give that view a height and width equal to the height and width of the device. For that, let's import in dimensions from React Native. Then we can just say const height comma width is equal to dimensions dot get window. Here to our view, let's pass in a style, set the height and set the width. Inside the view, we want to pass in the image. So we'll also have to import an image here. So that should be dimensions. We'll pass in image, come down here and pass in the image. Let's set the source equal to a URI image dot URLs dot regular. And let's close that out. If you have a look at our debugger, you'll notice that each image has a set of URLs. And inside that we're using the regular URL. If we save that out, we'll notice that our image doesn't show up. That's because we need to style the image. So we'll say style, we'll say flex equal to one, and we'll set the height to null and the width to null. That way, this image will automatically take up the size of the parent element, which is set to the height and width of the device. Let's save that. And we notice we're getting our image. If we swipe left, we see the other images show up as well. Let's also add one more property, which is called resize mode and set that to cover. And lastly, let's add the key so that we stop getting this error. So here in our flat list, we'll use key extractor. We'll get the item and we'll set the index to item.id. So there we see our image is showing up. If we swipe, we see all the 30 images that are displayed. In the next part, we'll add in the animation for the action buttons at the bottom. And we'll also fix this issue of this black screen that temporarily shows up before the image is loaded.